Good day, it's Dr. Daniel Cameron. I'm here to discuss another article as part of our All Things Lyme video blog series. There's an article that just came out discussing the concept of false positive IgM Western blot tests. But when you look at the article in detail, most of the children actually had a true positive IgM Western blot test. So let's take a look at the article in detail. The article was published in the Journal of Pediatrics with Lantos as the first author. He's part of the Division of General Internal Medicine and Division of Pediatric Infectious Diseases at Duke University. They looked at 167 children admitted to Boston Children's Hospital from 2007 to 2014. All were positive by the IgM Western blot test, negative by the IgG Western blot test, the median age was 10.9 years, 64% were boys. Now IgM and IgG Western blot tests do not measure directly the organism. Instead, they measure proteins that are generated in response to the infection. So you get a blot or banding pattern seen on the left of your screen. And to score a Western blot, you need two out of three IgM bands or five out of 10 IgG bands. Now IgM is thought to only be around for a month or two, but in actual fact, IgM levels can rise during exacerbations, fall during remissions for six to 18 months, even after treatment for an EM rash, according to STEER, and the IgG may never become positive according to the FALN clinical trial. Now, 71% of children were truly positive in this Boston Children's Hospital series. 35% had a classic EM rash. 43% had classic disseminated Lyme disease, 38 of which had radicular neuropathy, 28 had meningitis, and 5 had carditis. The authors argued that 48 children in this series did not have Lyme, 24 had nonspecific signs of less than 60 days, 10 had signs lasting more than 60 days, and 14 had arthritis. Now there is literature that's compelling that says Lyme disease cannot always be specific. Bloom from Tufts University School of Medicine described five children with nonspecific symptoms. He cites behavioral changes, forgetfulness, declining school performance, headaches or fatigue, and two cases, a partial complex seizure disorder. Lyme disease can also exhibit signs for more than 60 days. Steer in 1977, as a postdoc fellow in rheumatology, reported that attacks were usually short, with much longer intervening periods of complete remission, with a median of 2.5 months, but some attacks lasted for months. To date, the typical patient had three recurrences. The IgG Western blot may also have not become positive because of antibiotics that were admitted, that were administered at Boston Children's Hospital. The authors also overlooked the clinical judgment. There's no evidence that the doctors at Boston Children's Hospital were asked for their clinical judgment. The authors point out correctly that there are false positive IgM Western blot tests. They cite a Columbia trial supported by the NIH where people were well, yet 20% met the CDC criteria for a positive IgM, and 37.5% had a positive IgM test using a specialty lab criteria. These were all subjects who felt well and typically would not be treated. The message from this article is that most children who have a positive IgM Western blot test and are ill have Lyme disease. The article also reminds doctors to use clinical judgment because not everybody has an IgG Western blot test, not everybody has typical presentations, and children actually have atypical presentations, have signs, and the illness can last more than 60 days. Thank you again for joining us on our All Things Lyme video blog.